This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Cuban woman living in Portmore reported missing. The police are seeking the help of the public to locate a Cuban woman who lives in Greater Portmore, St. Catherine, and who has been reported missing. They say 34-year-old Yenny Campbell was last seen in the community of Silverstone on the afternoon of Friday, December 10. She is of brown complexion, slim build, and is 5 feet 3 inches tall. Reports from the Portmore police are that about 4.30 p.m., Campbell was last seen at home. Her mode of dress at the time she went missing is unknown. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Yenny Campbell is asked to contact the Portmore police at 876-949-8422, police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. Three arrested after submachine gun thrown out a window during police search. Three people are now in custody after a gun was reportedly thrown through the window of a house that was being searched by police officers. The incident happened in Irwin, St. James on Wednesday, December 15. It is alleged that at about 6.30 a.m., a police team executed a search warrant at the premises during which an object was thrown through the window. Further checks revealed that the object was a Luger 9mm Intratech submachine gun with one 9mm cartridge. The three occupants of the house were accosted and will remain in custody pending further investigations, the police said. Teen among three in custody after gun and ammo found under pillow. A 17-year-old boy who acted suspiciously when he saw police patrolling his community is one of three now in custody following the seizure of a firearm and six rounds of ammunition. The incident occurred at a house on Augustown Road, Kingston, on Wednesday, December 15. The police were alerted when the juvenile ran into the house on seeing them on patrol. He was subsequently accosted and the premises searched. A Glock 17 pistol and ammunition were found under a pillow. The two other occupants of the house were also taken into custody. Investigations continue. Alleged a car thief charged after being held with a stolen Honda Fit. Swift action by the police resulted in the recovery of a stolen Honda Fit motor vehicle and the arrest of an alleged car thief on Saturday. Charged with larceny of a motor vehicle is 36-year-old Jason Blake, a resident of Rosemount District in St. Catherine. Police said the 2004 vehicle was reportedly stolen between 5.30 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. at the intersection of Hainan Road and Worthington Avenue in St. Andrew. A report was immediately made to the police, who, after receiving information, coordinated their resources. The vehicle being driven by Blake was intercepted at the intersection of Malines and the Eastwood Park Roads in the corporate area. Blake was taken into custody and, following further investigations, was subsequently arrested and charged. Woman Charged in October Murder Case a woman has been formally charged with the October murder of 56-year-old Radcliffe MacDonald of Little Key Road, Kingston, who was found dead at home when he did not turn up for work. She has been identified as a 48-year-old Adonis Noteman of Bustamante Highway, Kingston 14. Reports are that on Saturday, October 16, checks were made at MacDonald's home following his absence from work. His body was discovered with a stab wound to the left side of his chest, the police said. Noteman was apprehended by the Ocherius police on Saturday, December 4, after she was pointed out by a member of the public. She was charged after an interview was conducted at the Major Investigations Division in the presence of her attorney on Wednesday, December 15. Police seek court's advice in Ligoni shooting. Police will be speaking with the clerk of courts as they continue to probe a shooting incident that occurred in Ligony St. Andrew last week. A taxi driver and a woman were shot and injured during the incident. The shooting happened during a confrontation between the cabbie and another motorist said to be a licensed firearm holder. Head of the St. Andrew Central Police Division, Senior Superintendent Marlon Nesbeth, said the police are looking at the best way to proceed. 
We are continuing our investigations around that so we can bring it to the clerk of courts for advice on how we can best proceed, Superintendent Nesbeth told the news. It was reported that the cabbie and the licensed firearm holder accused each other of driving badly. Their argument turned into a fight during which the firearm holder fired his gun hitting the cabbie. It was subsequently discovered that the woman was also shot. But a video which has since emerged on social media has revealed that the taxi driver and the man were exchanging words when the cabbie was shot. The video did not show a tussle at the time of the shooting. After being shot, the cabbie hopped away as someone, believed to be the person recording the video, shouted that he deserved what he got. The incident reportedly caused a traffic pile up, but police were quickly on the scene to get things under control. Three foreign nationals among seven caught in car with illegal gun and ammo in St. Anne. Three foreign nationals are among seven people who were charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition when police intercepted the car they were traveling in and found a gun on Salem Main Road, St. Anne, on Wednesday, December 15. They have been identified as Kristen Codlin, a 29-year-old medical assistant of Maryland, USA. Rashid Jacobs, a 29-year-old soldier of Ipswich United Kingdom. Tamika Carter Jacobs, a 29-year-old quality officer of Ipswich United Kingdom. Gavin Barnett, a 31-year-old farmer of Albertown, Trelawney. Lysandra Jacobs, a 25-year-old student of Stettin District in Albertown, Trelawney. Yakim Shaw, a 24-year-old farmer of Stettin District in Albertown, Trelawney and Riandra Jacobs, a 20-year-old student, also of Stettin District in Albertown, Trelawney. Reports are that a police team acting on information intercepted a Toyota Isis motor car. The police said both the vehicle and its occupants were searched, and a Taros 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 12 cartridges were found inside a cross bag beneath the front passenger seat. The incident happened about 9.30 p.m. All seven people were subsequently charged and will appear before the court at a later date. Boyfriend charged with 2019 murder of Kenesha Keshon Brown The St. Catherine police have now charged the man accused of murdering his girlfriend, Kenesha Brown, in 2019. He is 34-year-old Tony Martin. Martin was taken into police custody and charged on Wednesday, December 15. Reports are that Brown, popularly known as Keshan, and Martin were at home where an argument developed between them. It is alleged that Brown used the stones to damage Martin's motor car, which resulted in a fight. The accused man then pulled his licensed firearm and fired a single shot, hitting Brown in her forehead. The incident happened about 12.45 a.m., on Saturday, July 20, 2019. Brown was taken to hospital where she was confirmed dead. Martin's court date has not yet been finalized. Shoppers urged to always request the receipts. The Consumer Affairs Commission is reminding shoppers to ensure that they get their receipts when making purchases this Yuletide season. Speaking at a Jamaica Information Service thinker tank, Director of Communications Latoya Halstead said that consumers are to be vigilant about getting their receipts as this is a time of the year when many vendors will be traveling from place to place. We encourage you, no matter where you purchase your items, that you get a receipt. The receipt must state the name of the place, it must have a contact number and an address, said Halstead. She noted that when a consumer purchases an item without getting a receipt, it makes it very difficult for the CAC to assist in getting redress. If the provider is not giving you a receipt, walk with your own receipt book. If they are not giving you the receipt, walk away from it because it's saying customer service after that transaction is going to be non-existent, Halstead added. She also informed that if a consumer goes into an establishment and sees the no refund, no exchange sign on display, it is important for them to know that the Consumer Protection Act trumps at that sign no matter what the provider is saying. She indicated that provisions are made in the Act to assist the consumers should they encounter challenges with an item that they have purchased. The CPA will assist in terms of either getting that item repaired 
exchange the or you get back your money, Halstead said. House approves a 60-day extension for Zozos. The House of Representatives has approved a 60-day extension of the zones of special operations. The areas are Denham Town, West Kingston, Norwood and Mount Salem, St. James, and the Greenwich Town and Augustown in St. Andrew. The House of Representatives on December 14 approved the resolutions for the extensions, which were moved by Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang. In his remarks, Chang said, the zones of special operations constitute the most comprehensive, inclusive and impactful development program in Jamaica's history. He noted that through the ZOZO, the government is ensuring that a community transformation takes place on a secure foundation. I need to remind the public and the House members that because of the nature of the ZOZOs, it requires a particular budget. The Zones of Special Operations is a special piece of legislation designed to provide safety in the community as we develop the community, Chang said. The zones have transitioned into different phases of the clearholder build strategy. Mount Salem and Denham Town continue into the build phase. Augustown and Greenwich Town are in the holder phase, and the Norwood remains in the clear phase of the strategy. The imposition of the Norwood Zozo has literally locked down the criminal activity in the area around it, and that is the intention of these activities. Still at the level of the Clare, but they would move into the next phase very soon, Chang said. He noted that the community of Mount Salem is getting to a point where we can be moving on to normal policing and security measures there. The law reform zones of special operations, special security and community development measures act is a critical component of the suite of modern legislation geared towards creating a framework for sustainable development and community renewal. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.